This Is Guar is the penultimate documentary about the band Guar. Not just, not just a, I mean, this is a band that's beyond metal. The things they talk about are actually envisioned on screen. If you've ever seen Guar in concert, you know to dress in clothes that you may not care about after. <laughs> yes, I have seen Guar in concert. I saw Guar in uh, at a downtown, a theater in downtown San Diego during San Diego Comic Con. Um, and I knew, I knew, I'm like, I'm just going to wear this jacket because I don't care if something gets on it, uh, which is bound to happen if you've ever seen Guar. But uh, the documentary is, well, we're going to find out because we have the director, Scott Barber, here with us and producer Tommy Avalone, fresh, Tommy, <laughs> fresh off the uh, I Love You, I Hate Me tour. We talked to you uh, last week. That's great. Yeah, I'm just going to stick around and uh, I'll be here next week. <laughs> and hopefully we'll see if some of the uh, Guar will be joining us. I know you listed um, Mike Dirks, Brad Roberts, and Mike Bishop may join the stream. So I have them listed in our Chiron here. Um, but uh, to get started, uh, Tommy, you've been on the show. How did this How did this whole project come together? I mean, I've known Scott since the Orange Years. Uh, and it was, Orange Years was something that I kind of watched happen from afar and was a big fan. And when Scott said his next movie is about Guar, I was like, let's do that. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> because me personally, I didn't know much about Guar besides it being on Beavis and Butthead or, you know, Bam's show or, you know, Empire Records. Uh, so I was like, I, you know, I would love to know more about this. So instead of like waiting to watch it uh, finished, uh, we just kind of did it together. And, and Scott, Scott really did everything. I was just, I kind of was there just to support. I'm playing a little magical chairs with this. And Scott, I realize I've interviewed you before, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, me and Adam were on for the Orange Years, which is the Nickelodeon oh, yeah. documentary. That documentary is so good, goes into so much depth, and gave me such a, a newfound appreciation. I mean, Nickelodeon was huge. I mean, that was huge. I mean, you know, my kids watch Nickelodeon, but it was like one of the few. I couldn't watch Disney Channel. I just thought that, I don't know, just didn't appeal to me. Yeah. Nickelodeon, there was something about the attitude and the way that mm -hmm. kids were respected. Um, if you've not just, I know we're going to talk about your Guar documentary, but just to give a, a, a plug for Orange Years, which I know is out on VOD, right? It's on Hulu as well. Oh, it's on Hulu. So that doc, it, what I really loved was learning what the philosophy was of the executives of like, this is how we're going to treat children. And it was yeah. like, we're going to talk to kids at a kid level. And it was it kind of like just, and look, I'm an adult. I'm watching Nick, right? Um, and then there was that Nick at Night. It's, it was, it's yeah. such a groundbreaking thing for its time. Uh, before we talk about Guar, just a little bit about uh, the Orange Years. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because people are like, Nickelodeon and then Guar? Like, what, <laughs> what's, the, <laughs> what's the thing? And besides getting slime. Stuck, yeah, slime. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of the promos for Nickelodeon, I've got green slime, and then for Guar, it's like red, blue, and green. But you know, yeah, Nickelodeon. What made uh, me and Adam really want to do that was it did have a Nickelodeon back in the day had a very punk rock ethos. Like it was very much screw what's going on in the mainstream. We're going to do this our own way, and everybody told them no. It was led by a wonderful lady named Geraldine Layborn who you know, it was behind the scenes. So a lot of people don't necessarily know her name or her face. And we want to get that out there because she was a teacher and a female, you know, back in, this is the late seventies, early eighties. And she really, everyone was like, that's not going to work. This cable thing is a fad. It's, it's, that's not, people are only going to watch, you know, NBC, ABC, CBS. And, uh, you know, they proved them wrong. And it, you know, there's all these amazing shows, Pete and Pete, are you afraid of the dark that they hold up to this very day? Uh, let's now you pivot. Uh, the connection is slime, yeah, uh, or blood, <laughs> gore, green slime, Something. liquid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, between you... me and Scott, we pretty much have children's programming covered. You know, I yeah. did the Barney Doc. <laughs> he's got the <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good. There you and go. It, Pop and color. Tommy's too. It's people in costumes, people in monsterish type costumes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was actually going to change my Barney background to the T Rex I have painted purple, just just for Guar, but I didn't have enough time. Now, so we have a lot of questions in the chat and we'll, we'll get to the chat questions, but what led you down the pathway to pivot from orange years to uh guar? Yeah. I mean, I was just thinking of what to do next. And I always kind of keep a Google doc of what would make a cool documentary. 
uh, and sometimes just something pops into my head and then I do a little more research to see if it warrants a documentary, you know, if it, there's actually a story there. And with Guar, I was like, oh my God, these guys story basically is a movie. Like, if I got to do that doc, all I would have to do is just not mess it up. So randomly at the time, my friend Rocky Moon, who is in a great band called American Sharks, everyone should check them out. They opened up for Guar. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. I want to do a Guar documentary. He got really close to them. And so I was like, pitch me to them, you know, and he did. And I had a couple of talks with them and they were a little shy at first, because as you can imagine, a bunch of people have approached them over the years to do projects and kind of want them to do all the work. You know, the way they put it is people would point a camera at them and go, OK, be crazy, you know, and would want them to to do everything. And uh, and so eventually I, I won him over. And uh, and I'm, I'm really glad that we got to, to work together on the documentary. One thing that amazes me about the documentary is the, just the amount of footage you have. I mean, yes. you go, the footage goes all the way back to the beginnings in, in 1985. Was that, I mean, who got this? Was it easy to get? And could you have made the movie with, with, uh, without this? Yeah. Footage? I think that the movie would have been very different, you know, and, you know, when you do a documentary, you, you kind of have your story, at least the way I do it, you know, you have your story, but then you have to let it go wherever it wants to go. And, we had all these crazy ideas, editing, how are we going to do it, mixture of cinema verite with interviews, and are we going to move backwards in time? And as, as we did the interviews, uh, we kind of realized the, 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 the movie is just letting these guys talk. We don't need to be fancy in the editing. The way I, I kind of liken it to Michael Anthony in Van Halen, you know, everyone goes, all he does is just go, do, 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 do. but you know, you got to have that so that uh, the Van Halen brothers can do their crazy stuff. If everybody's going crazy, it's going to be lame, you know? So uh, it, when we found the interviews and then once we found all that archival, we're like, that's the movie. Nothing is going to be better than just showing this amazing archival footage with these guys just bearing their soul. You know, these people that have lived an unreal life being so vulnerable and candid and not what you would expect. They're not the people you would expect behind that mask, but I got to give props. That's all Bob Gorman. He is a uh, bone snapper. He's been in Guar since like 1985, 86. And he has just, he kind of considers them the historian. And he's yeah. just collected every flyer of every Guar show, you know, and because they are a multimedia project, you know, they make movies, they make comics, they make all this stuff. They were filming nonstop. So uh, we found like, oh my God, everything that they say, there's a video to, to show that story. So yeah, to get to sit at their, the Guar headquarters and just go through boxes and boxes of VHS and transferring them all was a dream come true. You know, I'm an eighties kid. I love VHS. I love all those old forms. of Some of their stuff was even on beta, just getting to transfer it over was a, a dream come true. Uh, yeah. Let's go. We got so many comments and questions. It's kind of out of control. I'll get to <laughs> as many as I get to as many as I can, but um, Dempsey says, I hope you know, this means Guar. Uh, dude B says R.I.P. Brocky. Uh, the yeah. film philosopher says Guar turns it up to 11. True, uh, speaking, speaking of Brocky, I mean, the, the film is pretty much, I, I think it's the, the, the skeleton of the film is Dave Brocky himself, as yeah, odorous. Uh, can you talk a little bit about him? Yeah, I mean, he, he's a force of nature, you know, like that's kind of the way that from talking with the Guar people because we never met him, you know, he passed years before we started this. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, he's a force of nature and you take that, the good and the bad with that, you know, he's one of the, I mean, to put it bluntly, he's one of the greatest front men that have ever lived. There's very few people in this world that, that have a brain and the charisma that he had, you know, and he had an element of danger to him. That's what Casey Orr, uh, says in there, an element of danger to him all the time. You never know what's going to happen. Good and bad with that more good than bad, but you know, and we really paint the whole documentary. Uh, you hear different stories from different people's point of view, you know, and we wanted to kind of leave it up to the to the viewer. What do you believe? You know, mm -hmm. um, and so that was one thing you hear. You know, there's a lot of infighting in the documentary because both Guar and we wanted it to feel real and not like a Guar commercial. Basically, I hope everyone walks away from the documentary going, damn, Guar is fucking awesome. They're, they're, <laughs> even, they're even cooler than I thought they were, but we knew it had to feel real. Mm -hmm. But Dave not being alive, we had to kind of we were I was very nervous the whole time of like, how do we make sure his side gets told, even though we're not here? So we just made sure anytime something about Brocky that could be taken at all negatively, we had to balance it out with two things that were good. 
I mean, that's uh, the beautiful thing with archival footage is like, you know, these people can stay alive uh, yeah. and uh, be present in the documentary, even though they passed away. Just a heads up. The band did say that uh, one of their trailers broke down this morning. So they're wow. hoping to come in soon. Cool. Well, let's, <laughs> let's get to some more questions and comments here. True Citizen Zero said we went to Denny's after the Guar show. We got a lot oh, of yeah. chairs. <laughs> um, and then uh, it's Greasy Vop, who's a member, says, I saw Guar in 98, and they did some crazy things that would get them canceled nowadays. Did you yeah. have to censor their edginess? You know, we, we really didn't. And that was one thing that we struggled with because we didn't want to get them canceled, you know, because they kind of operate in their sphere. And now we're hopefully introducing them to new people, and we didn't want it to be recontextualized. And the way that we kind of uh, frame it in the documentary and we frame it in press is that, yes, they do edgy, weird, bad, offensive things, but it's more like, um, I would say, like Cartman from South Park or Michael Scott from The Office. It's a, so They're saying that this stuff is bad. They're not saying that the stuff that they're doing is cool. You know, you're supposed to look at Cartman. You don't think that he's awesome and want to be like him. You go, what an idiot. You know, or Michael Scott, particularly in the early episodes of the office you're not supposed to think he's cool you think he's bad you know and that's essentially guar in a weird way is woke you know <laughs> they've always spoken out against sexism and racism and war and uh you know for climate change that's the whole thing uh that whenever humans destroy the ozone layer that's what thawed guar out and now has brought the end of humanity so <laughs> it was something that we had to think about but we're like you know it they do these edgy things to show that that stuff is bad essentially well, it's I never felt that Guar was like lecturing though. It's like exactly, the messages yeah. with may have been there, but I think they were committed to entertaining the audience primarily, uh, first and foremost. Horror Punk says I was at the show in Cleveland with Guar Mushroom Head that Jerry Springer filmed for one of his shows, and Guar fed him to the galactic worm. One of the <laughs> funniest shows I ever went to which is awesome. Brian Landis says, I have to imagine that some of your camera equipment got stained from filming Guar. Is that true? Yeah. Uh, and I actually, <laughs> I, I have a tripod. I had a silver tripod that I use that has blood all over it. And I, I'm not going to, like, it's now it's just a, 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 a souvenir. I'm not ever going to wash it. I keep it in my office. Just here's the bloody tripod. But surprisingly, you know, I used a lot of the small cameras, the Sony mirrorless cameras and dslrs to get right up front and all i did was i put a bag over it like a plastic bag and they still work <laughs> so they they live uh let's see i uh, we i think uh right from the trailer michael bishop is here hey hey, hey what's going on oh and uh we got if you guys are in the same space it might not work we'll yeah get some feedback yeah on the audio so let me um Let's see if we can, uh, Michael, we have you here. You can also okay. share the camera if you want. Yeah, you guys could share the camera if you're in the same area. Otherwise, okay. you'll get people. But uh, good to see you, sir. What are your thoughts now that the Guard documentary is out and available for all to see? How do you feel about this? I love it. I mean, I'm really happy that, uh, really happy that, you know, this thing came out. I mean, it's exactly what the band needed and it's always it's what we always wanted from a documentary you know it, it, it uh, uh tells the story which what to me has always been the most interesting story of of of, of war is the story of how it is this unique thing that uh is about you know art and music and commitment to one another and and that's that's the narrative that that scott put on film and it's uh you know, we're just really lucky that uh, <laughs> that we got we got him to do it uh, because we were approached by you know a, a number of times about doing a documentary. Everybody usually wanted to tell the story about you know about I don't know just either make the band look sort of really weird or you know and and or just you know it, we definitely didn't want something to be sort of a just the story of Dave Brocky or just the story of a kind of a hagiography that didn't have any sort of critical look at the band and that's that's not what what scott did he did really the best thing that a person can do when they're a documentarian which is that he looked at it he found a narrative that uh that told us you know that told us the story that reflects on the band and made a great film 
we, we've got a lot of comments and questions here. Would you mind uh, going through some of the, I don't know if you can answer all these questions, but we'll do our best. Um, for or against us says, I learned about Guar from the Beavis and Butthead Sega Genesis game. Uh, Brock Samsonite says, it's like a real life Spinal Tap, but more intelligent. <laughs> so, and what's it like? Scott, Scott, Scott says, what's it like looking behind the meat curtain, so to speak? <laughs> how, how do you answer that question behind the meat curtain <laughs> what's there well, it's just Bro it's just a black hole <laughs> <laughs> rock samson that goes on as please tell me you cover the costume creations and backstories is that a part of the doc um uh, i mean th th there's a there's a lot of shots of i think maybe scott would answer that one there's a lot of shots of the uh of the process um and you know what goes on during a show but it doesn't focus on that too much there's too much to focus on to really <laughs> i can't believe it got made at all there's so much to focus on uh yeah any any comments on that uh, scott or tommy um there there is some stuff about that you know and that was one thing i mean i really wish this could be a series but as we were doing it we're like these these folks story is 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 the human side is the is the draw this is what's going to be would it be cool to see how the ball sack the jaws of death boots work yes that's really cool it's like magic but it's way more interesting to hear this insane story of the lives that these people have lived and to get to know them and fall in love with them each character um so yeah i guess to, i would echo bishop yeah a little bit well, I would say the first half of the movie is is about Dave and Hunter, and Hunter was like, I guess, the mastermind behind a lot of the costumes and the effects that were going on in the show. Yeah. Uh, X Douchey McDouche X says, "Hail the scum dogs of the universe," and uh, there you go. And then a uh, uh, question here: uh, Lubich touched me. He says, "Do you like Guar? Do you like that Guar will live on past all the original members like Dave and Vision?" Uh, I, I, I actually don't, um, I, I've heard people say that a lot. Um, I, I, I like that the idea, but I think that, you know, he might be asking, you know, do you feel like Guar will, or, or do I believe it? I actually don't. I think that, uh, the, it will serve, it can survive the loss of musicians. What it can't survive is the loss of artists, right? Because that's that those, those guys are really hard to replace, and um, ultimately, I think that the uh, you know Bob Gorman, Matt McGuire, uh, when those guys stop wanting to do this, I don't know that it'll continue on. Just because it's really hard to replace them. I mean, we haven't uh, we keep trying to get new artists to come in, but one of the things that this story is about is that commitment to one another right that's the thing that you can't replace you can get people who can make stuff but you can't replace that sort of willingness to sacrifice and commitment to one another to do this thing that's what's hard to find so yeah. solomon thornton says i just got one thing to say you rock the film philosopher says guar is eternal and uh and then also uh will guar retirement ever happen hope not yeah i don't know i <laughs> if i i can't see myself being mick jagger's age and strutting around in the uh, <laughs> costume but but i hope so you know i mean another question here whose job is it to clean the masks and costumes asks ryan land oh that's the poor suck slave i don't know i mean <laughs> hey chris i i just want to add to like you know like the movie right now is on shutter but what's, what's great about the dvd release coming out in a couple days is there's all these extra special features and extra stories that didn't make it into the movie scott i actually forget what are the other things that are in the dvd yeah thanks for bringing that up because one of them is behind uh behind the scenes at a guar concert where we follow bob and matt as well as the musicians around to show how they set everything up and you do get to see how some of the stuff is made they kind of walk through that um yeah and then there's also just extended interviews interviews that didn't make it in there or longer interviews and then i mean the real the real 
thing that people are really going to want to see is it's an interview with Dave that's never been out there before, and it's incredible. And also extended Ethan uh, Umbre about uh, Empire, Empire Records. Empire Records, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a comment God here. physical media. <laughs> uh, yes. I, I, I'm a big fan of Blu-ray. I've produced a bunch of them and working on my own film right now. Like that to me is like, it's, it's not just the movie, it's the experience, yeah. right? Ryan Landis says, here's my future Guar pitch, full length animated movie. Well, full length movie, yes. I don't know about animated. Animated would be great, but, uh, um, you know, and it would allow us to do some of the crazier stuff that we, you know, maybe, maybe, and we've always been a huge fan of like heavy metal movies and all those, you know, I mean, maybe sort of a combination would be good. You know, well, when, when you see like Metalocalypse, I don't know if you ever heard of the show Metalocalypse. I feel Metalocalypse was inspired by Guar. Am no I wrong? Way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> quite a bit i mean i know john schnepp one of the directors and he designed the characters for metalocalypse and it just it had like a guar vibe jismac is joining us uh right underneath you michael uh that's the name you chose uh <laughs> how's it going well you know we're breaking the fourth wall here and talking about our documentary it's going pretty good we're loading into a venue now in cincinnati so i figured they could actually see the human face behind Jismac. So I, I typed in Jismac. <laughs> That's <laughs> let's awesome. And let's do it. Great. Uh, True Citizen Zero, who's seen the doc, says, the animations in the doc were really good, too, especially the shooting story. So. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree. That was something, you know, like you had mentioned before, all of the, uh, we had so much amazing B-roll from the archival footage to help show what these guys were talking about but there are certain things like yeah pete getting shot there's no footage of it but you need to see it so we were like how do we do that but how do we also do it and not feel like we're cheating what's a style of animation that would work with guar and feel like it was not just a crutch and so we went cat yeah with that kind of old jack kirby style comic book that's good so so you have a show tonight yeah oh sweet oh my god black death rager tour we're out here uh, doing it Till November third, and the film What's your philosophy city to play. <laughs> there, no, <laughs> uh, venue or city? City. You know, it's that's a tough one. We have definitely uh, markets overseas and here in America that are really, really good. The fans are crazy, and the shows are always packed. But you know, doing it this long for me now, it's the new city where we haven't played. Usually, nice. is the because it's something new and and uh we get to we get to bring guar to people who haven't seen it before that's really the most exciting yeah, are the shows more better. toned down now than they were in the early uh, late 80s i should say oh absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> the shows are way more overblown there's more uh gallons of fluids flying than ever before oh my god uh the film, <laughs> the film philosopher asks question what's the origin of guar and the philosophy behind them i think the doc answers that question um you really need to see the doc and the blu-ray did you say it's out today tommy or in a couple days uh october 25th right scott yep yeah okay and it's so, on shutter and amc plus yeah shutter and amc plus already and then yeah the dvd and all the tvod like the itunes amazon all that is october 25th and then nice. uh Four more days Four more days. I just uh, when you what what can we expect on the Blu-ray? Because I know we can see it on I've Shutter. I love mm -hmm. I love Shutter. If you're a horror fan, Shutter is great. Uh, oh, but it's great. Yeah, I, I love it. Love it. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. You should uh, see a movie. You may have heard of it. At, uh, it's a Taiwan zombie movie called The Sadness. It's so good. Check out The Sadness. I, it's uh, definitely something that I think you would enjoy. Um, but uh, what what can we expect on the Blu-ray? Yeah, I mean, um, we've got extended uh, extended clips. Like we were kind of saying, there's tons of interviews that didn't make it on there, as well as interviews that are on there, but just longer versions. There's the last interview with Dave Brocky, which is, I mean, it, you, you have to see that. That's like the, the crowning thing on it. Uh, and then there's... Uh, like Tommy was mentioning, we got Ethan Embry to talk about how Guar got into Empire Records and what that was like. Uh, and then, yeah, behind the scenes at a Guar show where we go 
show all that these guys do to, uh, you know, to put on a show. It's not anything like any sort of regular concert at all. It's a it's hundred times as much effort that they, they put into it. And, you know, and extended interviews from like, you know, like the Alex Winters or yeah. Ray Margera's Weird Al, uh, Thomas Lennon, uh, you know, MC Chris, all that sort of fun stuff. Well, all these people we got to see briefly in the movie now a little bit more extended. Yeah. Uh, a question here from Danger UXO. Has a venue ever not known what they're getting into with a Guar show? Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I always remember the time we played a church in Wales on the first, you know, like the first time we went to England. And it was one of the few gigs that didn't get canceled because it was in Wales. And, and this British member of parliament had been sort of going around like yanking everybody's licenses that was going to let us play so we go down there and do the show and it's in a church that has a blonde wood floor like this really oh, hundreds of years old and i mean i felt bad just even doing the show but then afterwards <laughs> the guy comes out wearing like rubber boots he's like this welshman and he's got a mop and he's like here you go guys they're like that's not how it works bye <laughs> Cool. And then uh, a good question to end on here. Dempsey says, if you had to pick a favorite song, Guar song, which would you all pick? Is there a favorite? Songs is what would happen. <laughs> we would all pick a different song. And yeah, and then we'd fight about it, and then the, the whole thing would never get made. Um, <laughs> no, I think I, I love the song uh, Sonder Commando. I think that's a good Guar song. And then we're playing one, Space Cake, that I love. Uh, Brad's always said, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Brad, you say Horror of Yig is kind of like the perfect Guar mm. song. I always thought Horror of Yig was kind of the quintessential sound of Guar. Like when I got in the band, they had written that song, but then we, you know, with me coming in, we changed it a little bit. And it just has all the parts that feel and sound like Guar to me. You know, it's, it's tribal, it's dark, it's... You know, it's fast, it's slow, it's got like pretty much everything in it. It's good, it sucks, it's all there. <laughs> it's all, it's got everything. Well, uh, I want to thank you all for coming on the Film Threat Livecast today. It's on Shutter now. This is Guar. Blu ray is out. And a, a, where can you get it, Tommy? I believe it's just Amazon, anywhere you can get DVDs. I, I, I know the band, you guys have it on tour as well, right? Are you guys bringing it? Yeah. So anywhere yeah. you get DVDs. I think we have DVDs. Do we have DVDs? We're selling. I don't know if it's here yet. I don't know if we have a shipment of those. I think it's, you know, it's coming. Yeah, I think you could pre-order them. I think I saw a sign out there where you could pre-order them. Blockbuster. And then, yeah. Everybody go to Blockbuster. Everybody go to Blockbuster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely Guar.net. If, you know, if you want yeah. Guar, Guar.net is a place to go to find out any information or where stuff's at. So... All right, so check that out. I want to say thank you to all of you, um, and so great to have you on again. Uh, I have Guar here. I have uh, I've gotten blood on me. I have seen you live in San Diego. Got it's just like it's 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 an event. It's not just a musical performance. Anyone who's seen Guar live and Tommy, always great to talk to you, Scott. Thank you so much. Thanks, yeah, uh, thanks for having us again on the new thank film you. and and take care. Have a great show tonight. Thank you. Guys. Thank right. you. Thanks Bye, a lot. Everyone. Later. Oh man. Take care, Scott. That was, great. that was great. That was great. They're awesome. Wait, yeah. Scott wants so to come back. Can... Wait, Scott, yeah. you have something else to say? No, no, that's you're, it. You're waving. Okay. okay. Say bye. <laughs> Just bye. Wait. Thanks, and also Orange Years, another recommendation. Orange Years on Hulu. Uh, and and congrats on that movie. Uh, awesome film. So, Thanks so much, Chris. Cool. Bye, y'all. Take care. Come bye. back when you have another doc. I will. Thank you. <laughs> Later. Uh, that's great. That so you so can great. buy it on their website. This is guard.net. And uh, I believe Amazon has it as well. Sweet. Sweet. Sweet.